shortly, but let's uh, before then make the first of our contributions to the BBC's anniversary weekend with a, a look back at some of the enduring images of 60 years of television sport. <laughs> The British contingent, which, in its place of honour as the host at the Games, brings up the very rear of the great athletic procession. And Oxford are definitely sinking, I think. Oxford are getting lower and lower in the water, and uh, they definitely are sinking. Oxford have sunk. There's that man who's really fighting for this cup medal. Could he score the winning goal now, himself? He's there! Henry, what a final! Four runs to get. No, is it? Is it the Ashes? Yes, it will look on the Ashes. Yeah, he's out. Ten wickets to lay up. Billy. And number three. And it's Lonsborough. Three, two. Lonsborough so tired, but she touched his ball. Lonsborough has the game medal. through. Magnificent run by Sharp. Dummies, and he's over. What a score. That's it, he's out. He's got it. 300 test wickets. And here she comes on the outside. Anne Packer's going to take the goal, my lord. It's Anne Packer, Great Britain. Oh, fantastic run. And here comes Hurst. He's got some people around the pitch. They think it's all over. It is now. It's four. And Rutherford has been hampered, and so has Castle Falls. Rockletto has fallen. Principal has fallen. There's a right pile up. And now, with all this mayhem, Foyne Avon has gone off and he's all. What a grandstand finish it is. He missed it! He missed it! No, it's on the ground. He missed it! It's a poor lad. Oh, this is incredible. Now, there's six on the trots, a world record. And he's done it! Goodness, it's gone way down to Swansea. Yeah. Oh, I see what a shot. There is the shortest shot that ever won a championship. And Jacklin is the winner. Oh, and he looks good with standing.
Puerto Rico. Here's Jonathan in the first round. Oh, it's huge, it's massive. Great Britain, gold medals. Stephen Redgrave, Matthew Pinson, mission accomplished. Wonderful memories of the last 60 years of BBC television sport. Now, one man who'll be contributing once again to Grandstand this afternoon has been involved for very nearly 50 of those 60 years. Here's how one of the BBC's most popular and respected commentators sounded back in 1955. And it looks as though Gay Donald has definitely only got to jump this fence to win the 1955 Gold Cup. And he's coming into it, Tony Grantham, and he's up over and striding away. Undoubtedly the winner. He can't lose now. 4-10 behind him, struggling gamely, but unavailingly to peg back Gay Donald, who's striding away to the winning post, the undisputed winner of the 1955 Gold Cup. Gay Donald, Halloween coming up into second place. The inimitable Peter O'Sullivan, of course, who joins us now from Ascot. Good afternoon, Peter. Good afternoon, Davy. Coming up to 50 years next year in the National and, uh, and the Ascot, uh, a Royal Ascot, rather. Tell me how things have changed in all the time you've been involved. How primitive was it in the early days? Well, there have been a lot of changes since then. Of course, 1947, we had the first photo finish camera. Uh, we had the first evening meeting. Uh, 1965, moving on quickly, we had... Uh, uh, the, the first uh, starting stalls, they made a, quite a traumatic difference from a commentary point of view. There have been uh, enormous differences. I used to commentate here at Ascot from the roof of the old stand. This was built and the rebuilt in the 1960s, and this is a, this is a great uh, luxury, this box. But uh, the open stands were, were not quite so easy. And uh, one of the big snags was when the Queen was present, the Royal Standard... Uh, would be fluttering and I couldn't see any of the starts of the straight courses so one of the officials very kindly and his official who now uh, in fact uh, operates uh, the lift of the members at Goodwood he used to uh, surreptitiously get hold of the flag and hold it close to the mast so that I could see the start there, there, were, there were lots of uh, there were lots of problems in those days especially uh, commentating from open scaffolds at Sedgefield and places like that I but, think we uh, all we're treated comparatively comfortably now. Sorry, Dougie. No, no, I was going to say, I think we all appreciate you have one of the most difficult jobs in sport. You've still got to call the horses in. But with all the advantages in technology, is the job easier now in that sense than it was in the early days? Well, I, I don't think it changes, uh, honestly, Dougie. I think the most that a commentator can hope for is to annoy as few people as possible. <laughs> Remember, uh, most people have uh, had a bet in a race and uh, you're inevitably relaying... Uh, ill tidings, and uh, to some extent you're held partially accountable for them too. Now you always commentate, I believe, through the binoculars that uh, you, you have with you there. Now yeah. those are the original binoculars, I believe, that you've had since the very start of your career. Yes, they, they've gone missing a few times, but mercifully they've always been retrieved, and uh, I've, been, I've been using them for 50 years, yeah. Plus, where did, where did they originally come from? Uh, that, that's a bit of a mystery, but I'd, uh, the, the story is that they came from a U-boat originally. Uh, Peter, lovely to hear from you. We wish you well this afternoon, of course. Three races coming up, so uh, let's take a look firstly at the runners and riders.